Oh, look what I found. How nice is this? That's going to be our cooling system for the motor inverter and charger. And I think we might sit it just about there. It's going to be no lower than the suspension. In fact, it's, it'll be fine there. It's out of the way of debris from the tires and it'll have its own little fans. And I think that will cool the inverter and the motor and the charger. And then in the front, we're gonna do another one. And in the front, we're gonna have a long radiator along here. We've got, a, we've got a rail there. We've got existing mounting things here. It'll be 700 mil long, 200 deep and quite narrow. It'll probably sit at an angle and it will be complete overkill for the job that's got to do, which is to cool the battery. So why would I have two radiators when the MG only had one? Let me explain, Dorothy. The MG had two completely independent cooling systems, one for the drivetrain and one for the battery. Now in the MG, it looked very complex with all this plumbing everywhere, and it took me ages to figure out how it worked before I got the technical manuals, which made it really plain. Now I thought I might get clever and just have one big system with one radiator, one big pump, big fans, and just put coolant through everything. But then I realized this would be quite a mistake. The two cooling systems run at different temperatures and they run at different times. Now in an internal combustion car, the coolant temperature might be around 80 to 90 degrees. But the drivetrain of this car needs to be a lot cooler. Not so much the electric motor, but when you're driving hard, the inverter electronics get really hot munching those electrons from DC back to AC to feed the motor. Anything more than 80 degrees and it'll stress out and go into limp mode. It likes to be around 50 to 60. So that's where the thermo fans kick in. But that's still way too hot for the battery, which operates best in a narrow range between about 25 and 35. Anything less and it won't charge very quickly. Anything more than, let's say, 50 degrees and I'm starting to get uncomfortable. Now, the car has lots and lots of self-protection stuff in the battery. Every module's got thermistors in it and it manages that really well but we want to keep it cool and what's more the battery is likely to be working hardest not when I'm driving but when the car is parked at a fast charger that's when the electrons are flowing back into the battery at the highest rate so did the MG ever heat the battery yes it did and yes I'm retaining that battery heater and did the MG ever cool the battery it certainly did by using a heat exchanger in the air conditioning system now I don't have air conditioning, so I don't have that heat exchanger and I need a radiator instead. Some EVs, like the Nissan Leaf, don't even have liquid cooling for their batteries, but I sure don't want to take any risks. So that's two cooling systems, one at the back for the motor and one in the front for the battery. Wasn't that interesting? So there's been a whole lot of boring stuff happening that I really didn't need to show you, but suffice to say, you know, extending looms and, and wiring and repositioning things like there's the crash module re put back where it should be. All right, but one thing I have done today is connect the two electrical systems together. We've got the MG system, but we also had the legacy electrics from the Porsche for our blinkers and hazards and brake lights and park lights and electric seats and windows and central locking, all that stuff still Porsche. So look what I've done. We've still got the key. We actually don't need this in future because we'll use the electronic MG fob to turn it all on. But right now we can still use the key, put it in, and then we've got our dash lights up. All our little lights, we've got headlights. Here the motors just go up there. And high beam, that works. Does it flash? Headlights down. So those two are now nicely connected. Got some interesting little problems to solve. One will be when you turn the ignition on in the Porsche, all the, all the lights come on and then it relies on a signal from the starter or the fuel pump or the, or the ignition computer to turn them off again, I think. I'm not sure how that actually happens, but they stay on, as you'd expect. What we'll do is we'll make it so that we don't rely on the key. At the moment, you need the key for the Porsche system, but we'll make it such that if you turn on the MG, it'll automatically fire some relays to give you accessories and ignition in the Porsche system, if that makes sense. Okay, now I need Matt because this little button here, assembly, is going to sit right there. And unfortunately, the tunnel's in the way, so I need to get Mr. Grinder Boy to actually make a nice big hole there, just so that the contact section of that switch can, can sit nicely there. Sparks time. Matt, you're upside down on the ceiling. That's it. 
Do you want some gloves to keep your hands looking beautiful and dove, just like a TV commercial? I'll pass. Give the clean hands to someone else. Yeah, and he comes straight down following that line yep. if you like. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Awkward, isn't it? Yeah, just because it's two layers, you know. Yeah. I don't think that's compromised the integrity of the chassis too much, do you? That's it. Hopefully the engineer tunes out of this episode. Even you can watch this episode, it's okay. Said so no one ever. He'd be like, nope. No. Four mil that way it would have been fine. This way. Task not written off. Task right off. Completely get a new chassis, start crush, again. Crush. Put in the chipper. Alright. He's got a dark sense of humour, this Matt, hasn't he? Let's we'll start here. There's a uh, cut, <laughs> cut line. Don't cut my leather steering wheel. You cut all this out? No. This, so you no. Only you only have this piece here. Like, no. What's that car that's No. Like? It's not retro. Don't you... What was the car with the one spoke steering wheel? The Holden? Uh, Cit the, Citroen. There's a um, Holden that had it too, wasn't there? Did they? Did Holden do one? With a single spoke? Oh, I'm sure it just came straight up and it was hideous, but it was... Glorious at the same time. Here's here's a photo of a very ugly one spoke steering wheel. It's good, it's like two spoke wheels. Oh two spoke road wheels. Yeah. Yeah. Find that that's a hideous looking wheel. It's perfect. I can put my dash back in now. Thank you. Back. I don't know what to do with the sunroof. I, I I don't want the sunroof. How would you seal this if you took it out? We can save a few kilos. It's it's not gonna seal. That's not a seal. It's horrible. We've got to do something. It's horrible. We've got to do something. Well, you could just fix it, you non. Hey, look, Josh Bucken. To be resolved. Right, in keeping with Stu's dodgy engineering company, a trimmer will hate this, but I've made up some little bits. So let's see how they go. That fits in there, kind of. Little, little surround. That's all right. And then this thing should go in here with a bit of luck. There we go. And then the trim will go around the outside, which is to be a little bit hard to get in with all this here. And then of course the original Porsche window switches go here. Windows, sunroof, don't know if I'll need that. Rear windscreen wiper, definitely not using that. Gonna have it nice and clean look. I like it when the rear window wiper is deleted from a 928. It just cleans up the look of it. And do I even want this rear spoiler? I've never seen an S4 body kit style without the wing. It'd be quite interesting to see what it looks like. I mean, we're not going to go 200 k's an hour. We're not going to go 150 k's an hour. We don't need a wing. Hmm. You tell me, wing or no wing? Tell us what you think in the comments. Actually, change your plan. Matt's right. This surround actually is, doesn't really look nice, so we're going to lose that completely. And we'll make up a new carbon fiber plate that sits and it'll about go all the way around the side and, and about flush with that there. I think that'll be better, so. Typical for this project, we change plans. You know, you do it one way, go, oh, that's not quite right, let's do it another way. So that's what happens when you don't have a plan. It's a very small crankcase. An old, old engine. Is that the 750? It is, yes. So that's out of this. That's it. Here's the camshaft. Oh, look, tiny little baby lobes. Tiny yeah. little, little engine. Yeah, and ball bearings on the on the mains. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Sounds a bit grindy. Yeah, it's needs a little bit of love. Matt Amour Murray, they call him. Yeah. Loves his middle name. <laughs> no. Nice fella. And what have we got here? Liquid yellow Clio. They're nice too. That's a lovely car. Look at how, look at that metal flake in that. That's beautiful. Really suits the Renault Clio. But no, I'm not tempted to make the Porsche yellow. As you can see, it's not an easy job at all fitting two wiring looms in one car. It's already getting a bit tight in here. Look at this steering column lock module. We need it. The car won't connect the high voltage without it, but it's just 
doesn't serve any function, so I'll find a way to mount it out of the way, back there somewhere. It'll just be a challenge to see if the thing will actually start again. That's the cycle we're in here, isn't it? You sort of, you do stuff, you make it work, and you go, okay, three steps backwards, pull it all apart again to get to the next thing. But that's the way it is. We'll get it working, get it moving, get it driving, then we'll make it pretty. Okay. And now Matt's made a nice hole for my, see the connector there? Forgot to put the trim in before I tighten it up. And while you're admiring the top of my head with all its marks on it from banging on things, I'll tell you a story. Janolan Caves, about 200 k's west of Sydney, is a fabulous place to visit. Really, really good guided tours through the underground caves there. It's just stunning. Also, because there are great driving roads to get out there. So if you are in Sydney, go out there. I got banned from Janolan Caves because I don't look up. And after the third time banging my head hard, they said, sorry, three strikes, you're out. You. You're one of those guys that, that doesn't look up. Great place to go, just make sure you look up. Meantime, this will go in there, and it'll work. Unlock car, where the relays go. Start, yes. Ah. Neutral, good. The car still works, despite everything that I've done to try and bugger it up. We should now have 14 volts going to the battery because it's charging from the high voltage battery to the low voltage. The low voltage battery was getting down a bit, it was down about 12, so the headlights should come up really well now. Oh, look at that, Matt. That's with 14 volts. Park. Try the horn. Oh, that's the Porsche horn. Okay, here we go. We're, we're supporting it here, but it's still going to want to try banana yep. at that point. Yep. We were talking about having just bolts there and bolts there, but it's going to be hard to get in and under it. So what, yeah. do you think, what are you thinking? A rail. So you're thinking put a, put a rail like that all the way forward, and then it can't go put anywhere. A, can't rock. Put a rail. We're actually supporting it along the whole width of okay. the front to the back of the box. Right, show us. So okay. Weld it on there. Build this off there on both sides. And all of a sudden, yeah. it's now absolutely it rigid. can't rock and it can't go like this way, can't go that way. Yep. And absolutely locks it totally it in place. It locks it in. We can put some rubber strip if we want to. It has a little bit of give, you know. And then these these ones are really key at the top as well. We won't have the, yeah. the cross brace, but it'll be welded, a formal yep. welded and, and rib thing here. Yeah. It's not going anywhere. No. Okay. Okay. The engineer's going to love it. Hopefully. Yeah. I can't see why not. It's, it's as a thought process in it, you know, it's like we've done this, we've secured it, three points of contact, whatever it is, not just, oh, we've got some ratchet straps from Bunnings. Okay, viewer, that's it for today. Short episode. Sorry for the dad jokes, I just can't help it. So, as always, thank you for watching. I just can't wait until we get the car moving so we can get it to a private track somewhere and do some actual driving. Clearly, it's time to get the battery done, even before we get the cooling system sorted. And if you're not subscribed yet, maybe you'd like to think about it. We do do a lot of other content apart from the EV stuff, although I will be in a new EV next week, the Xpeng G6. But if you haven't seen it, I'd love you to check out this review we did recently of this very nice Audi, or maybe this Ferrari. You want to say goodbye to that? Goodbye. There you, go. you asked for it and I delivered. So that's it. Thanks for watching. It's been emotional. <laughs>